In this video, we're going to look at slope of a line. Slope is a measure of the slant of a line, or the steepness of a line. It is also called the rise over the run, or the vertical change over the horizontal change. So it's a ratio of how much the line goes up and down compared to how much it goes across. We use the letter M to represent slope. Uh, we are going to first look at our general cases of slope. We have four cases. The first one for a positive slope, our line will go up to the right. So it's going up higher as it goes across. This is a positive slope. Our next case is a negative slope. Negative slope will go down as it goes toward the right. And we always talk about toward the right. Our other two cases, first a zero slope, which is a horizontal line. It does not go up or down. There's no vertical change, so you get a zero in the numerator. And then we have the undefined, which is our vertical line. We're changing up and down, but we're getting a zero for horizontal change. That's why we have undefined. You are not allowed to have zero in the denominator. First we'll look at slope if we are given two points on a line. We will use the slope formula and notice in the formula you have y2 minus y1. The y is your vertical movement, so this is your vertical change. The denominator is your x's, this is your x change or your horizontal change. So we'll use the formula I like to label my points to make it easy to plug in. So every point gets an X and a Y. We just use the subscripts to tell which point it came from. So X1, Y1, X2, Y2, and it doesn't matter which way you label them. I would always practice writing my formula before I plugged in. So M is equal to Y2 minus Y1 over x2 minus x1. If you memorize this in the other order, y1 minus y2, that's okay, but you have to do the x's in the same direction. And now we just substitute. It's an evaluate problem. So y2 is 3 minus y1, negative 1. So you have to be careful here. Don't lose a sign. The minus is from the formula. You're plugging in a negative 1. Right? Then the x's. x2 is 3 minus from the formula a negative 3. Clean up your signs, minus a negative, that will give us plus, and a plus down here. So we end up with 3 plus 1 is 4, and 3 plus 3 is 6. This will reduce. We have a common factor of 2. 2 will go into 4 2 times, 2 will go into 6 3 times. For our next example, two more points. We'll label them x1, y1, x2, y2. And then we just plug in. y2 will give us 1 minus y1 is 6 over x2 is 4 minus x1 is negative 3. Be careful. Use a parenthesis so you don't lose a sign. Now work it out. On your numerator, 1 minus 6 gives us negative 5. On your denominator, minus a negative makes plus. 4 plus 3 is 7. So a negative 5 over 7. This one is the negative slope. It'll go down 5 for every 7 that it goes across. The other one was a positive. For next example, we have the points 5, 2, and 6, 2. We will label. So x1, y1, x2, y2. We will plug into our formula. So y2 is 2 minus y1 is 2, and x2, 6 minus x1 is 5, and this one you're getting a 0 in the numerator. So 0 on the numerator is going to be a 0, so this would be a horizontal line. We have two more points. We will label, so negative 7 will be x1, what will be y1, and x2, y2. 
plug into our formula. So we have 5 minus 4 over x2 is negative 7 minus y, x1 is negative 7. So you be careful here. Don't lose a sign. Minus a negative, remember, makes plus. So when we clean up, 5 minus 4 is 1. But notice what happens in your denominator. Negative 7 plus 7, you get the 0. Remember, this is undefined. You're not allowed to have 0 in the denominator. And it is a slope of a vertical line. Next, we'll use the slope-intercept form of the line to find our slope from the equation. So we're given an equation of the line. If it's in this particular form, and the important part here is to make sure y is isolated. If y is isolated, this is the slope-intercept form. It gives you some information with no work. Your slope will be the coefficient of the x. And remember, if there's a sign, it's included with that. That will be your slope. The point that's here by itself, or the not constant, this is going to be your y-intercept. And remember, definition of y-intercept, it is where the line crosses the y-axis. And for that to happen, the point is 0b. It has not gone across, so it's landing on the y-axis, and this is where it lands. We'll look at some examples where we are given the equation, and we want to find the slope and the y-intercept. So you make sure it's in the proper form. y needs to be isolated. This is a great problem, no work. Right? Slope will be the coefficient of the x, so our slope is 2. Your y-intercept on this one will be negative 6. Or if you're supposed to write it as an ordered pair, it is 0, negative 6. Our next one will take a little bit more work. Notice it is not in the proper form. It does not have y isolated. So we will have to do some algebra, isolate the y. Then we can read off the slope and the y-intercept. Right, so we have 5x minus 8y equals 16. We want to isolate the y. So get rid of your 5x. It's a positive 5x, so take it away. When you take it away on this side, it will cancel. So 16 minus 5x. All right, then go back on this side with the y. You're going to divide by negative 8. When you're working with lines, go ahead and divide it under each piece. With formulas, we left it as 1. With lines, it's better to work with um, separate pieces. All right, so we'll clean up y equals negative 8 into 16 will go negative 2. Be careful here. You have two negatives that will give you plus, and you can pull your coefficient away from the x. Now we can read off the information we want. We have y isolated. The slope is the coefficient of the x. It doesn't matter that I've switched the order. So my slope is 5 eighths. My y-intercept is negative 2. So if we need an ordered pair, it is 0, negative 2. For our next one, notice it doesn't look exactly like our formula. We have the y isolated, but we only have a constant over here. We don't have the m and the x. So if we wanted this term to disappear, what would the m have to be? 0, because 0 times anything will make it disappear. Um, so this one is going to have a zero slope. It is a special line. This will give your y-intercept, just picking from your form. Um, to me, this is, that is difficult to go back to the slope formula. And I would just remember when I only have one variable, it's a special line. When it's y equals something, it is a horizontal line. So I would think outside the box a little bit. Horizontal line through 7. Our slope on a horizontal line, this is where your special cases are important, is 0. And the y-intercept, this particular line goes through 7. All of these values are 7. And so the y-intercept will be 0, 7. For our last example, we cannot put this in slope-intercept form. 
we need to isolate the y. We don't have a y. So think outside the box a little bit. This is a special line. You only have one variable, x equals 8. This is a vertical line. It is through the 8. Right? Vertical line has undefined slope. Be careful, don't write 0. It is undefined. Okay. Y-intercept. Um, does this one go through the y-axis? It does not. It's parallel to the y-axis. So there is none. Next, we'll use slope to tell whether lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. For parallel lines, they will have the same slope. Perpendicular lines will have slopes that are negative reciprocals. So opposite sign and flip it over. If it is neither of those cases, then it will not be parallel or perpendicular. Let's look at two examples here. And we're going to determine whether the lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. For our first example, what we need to know to determine this is the slope. It's good because they're in slope-intercept form. It's very easy to pick off your slope. So our slope on the first one is 3. Our slope on the second one is 3. The slopes are the same. So the lines are parallel. The next set of examples. Right, we have two lines. The first line, both in slope-intercept form. The first one has a slope of 2. The second one has a slope of negative 1 half. These are not parallel, but 2 and negative 1 half are negative reciprocals opposite sign and flip it over. This would be 2 over 1. Flip it over. So these are perpendicular lines. Our third example, these are written as functions, but remember f of x is the same as y. So we can just write that as y. And then it would be in slope-intercept form. Our slope here is 2. Our slope on the second one is a half. Notice it does not have a negative sign there. So these are not negative reciprocals. This is flipped over, but it doesn't have the opposite sign. So these are going to be neither. For our next example, these are lines. The exponents of the x and y are 1. But we cannot read off the slope to tell if they're parallel or perpendicular. They are not in the proper form. So we're going to have to do some algebra to rearrange them to the slope-intercept form before we can read it off. So for our first one, 2x plus 3y equals 9, we want to isolate the y. So get your 2x off. It's positive 2x. We're going to take it away. When you take it away from this side, it's gone. Take it away from the other side. All right? Go back on this side with your y. You're going to divide by 3. We're going to divide it all the way across under each piece because we're working with lines. I didn't mean for this to run together, but that's OK. So we have y equals 3. You can pull your coefficient away here a little bit. It's negative 2 thirds x. Now you can pick off your slope. It is the coefficient of the x. So the slope of this first line is a negative 2 thirds. Right. For the second one, we're going to have to do some algebra. So we'll do it right here. 4x plus 6y equals 12. We have to isolate the y. So get your 4x off. It's a positive 4x. Subtract it. When you subtract it from the left side, it is gone. Subtract it from the right side. And then we're going to divide by 6. This will give us y equals 2 minus 4 sixths x, which we can reduce. 
It's still going to be negative, but these are even, so we can divide by 2. 2 will go into 4 2 times. 2 will go into 6 3 times. There's our x. Our slope is negative 2 thirds. The slopes are the same, so these lines are parallel. We'll do one last example. Again, we want to know, are the lines parallel, perpendicular, or neither? And to know that, we need to know the slope. Neither of these are in slope-intercept form, so we're going to have to do algebra and change them into our y equals mx plus b form. So for the first one, 4x minus 6y equals 10, we want to isolate the y. So get rid of your x. It's a positive x, so we're going to subtract it. When we subtract it from this side, it's gone. We need to also subtract it from the other side. Okay. Then we go back on the side with the y, and we're going to divide by a negative 6. All the way across. We'll clean up. So we have y equals. Uh, this will be negative. And we can reduce. 2 will go into 10 five times. 2 will go into 6 three times. Also, we can clean up here on the slope. The two negatives will give you positive 4 over 6. And then we can reduce that. Uh, it is also even. So it will be common factors of 2. 2 will go into 4 two times. 2 will go into 6 three times. And we can pick off our slope for that line is two-thirds. Right, our other line, 9x plus 6y equals 5. We want to isolate the y, so we're going to subtract the 9x. 6y equals 5 minus 9x. We have to divide by 6. So we get y equals 5 6. This will be minus. You can reduce here. A common factor of 3. 3 will go into 9 3 times. 3 into 6 will go 2 times. And so we can pick off our slope is negative 3 halves. Right, these are reciprocals. They're flipped over and they have opposite signs that would be perpendicular lines.